Good afternoon. My name is Arkady Freckman. I'm a personal injury trial lawyer here in New York City. And today I wanted to talk about case values. How much are you going to get for your injury? If you have a herniated disc in your back, what is it worth, right? And I think a lot of people have this misunderstanding that everything is worth the same across the board. So if I have a herniated disc, then I get a certain amount. If I have a bulging disc, I get a certain amount. If I have a torn shoulder, labral tear, I get a certain amount. And it's just not really true. It really depends on how convincing and persuasive you are as a client and how your lawyer builds up the case. Now, of course, there are certain factors that are always in play. And the three big ones are the venue, where the lawsuit is gonna be pending, the policy limits, right? Because you can't get like a million dollars if it's only a $25,000 policy. There's just no way to get beyond that. And also the insurance company, because some insurance companies are known to be fair and offer fair settlements, reasonable settlements, whereas other insurance companies are no pay or they're very cheap, and then you have to go to trial. But see, these other factors like the insurance company as well as the venue, some venues are friendly, right? Like the Bronx, Brooklyn are friendly venues, whereas Westchester or maybe somewhere like out in Suffolk County could be more conservative venues. But those factors are really obstacles. They're not necessarily factors that kill your case because you could go to Suffolk County if you have a great case, if you do a good job, if you're very persuasive, you have all the evidence lined up and you could win, you know, $10 million in Suffolk County. There's no, nothing stopping you, right? The same way you could be up against a really tough insurance company that says, we're not paying. And the fact that they say we're not, you're, they're not going to pay, you go to trial and then you hit them for $10 million. So that's not really an impediment, right? That's more of like an obstacle that you have to overcome. But what I'm talking about today is how do you value a case, right? How do you put a value on damages? And if the policy is, let's say, open or really big, let's say the policy is $100 million, right? How do you put a value on it? And do you do it just by looking at the medicals? Or do you want to look at something else like the client's biography, the client's human story, the client's family, their friends, their witnesses? And I think it's so important to really do a deep dive and to look into everything, right? Because Take this example. Let's say you had two different cases, right? One case was a car crash. Like somebody's at a red light, they get hit by a large like Amazon tractor trailer, 18 wheeler, and they have a herniated disc. And that's it, right? You just call the doctor, the doctor puts up the MRI, and he says, this is a herniated disc at C3, C4. And you have no other witnesses. I mean, you have a client testify and he complains, he says, I'm really hurt, I'm really hurt. And then the jury is tasked with putting a number on it, right? Being that fair, neutral juror who's going to put a number, what's fair, what's just on this case. And if that's all they have, they could put a low value on it, or they could even say this should be a defense verdict. And the reason they're going to do that is because you're not giving them any evidence, right? All you're giving them is, are the medical records, all your the testimony is only from the client, and then you're putting up a doctor. Sure, the doctor is saying there's a herniated disc, but guess what? The insurance company is gonna put up a doctor, and the insurance company's doctor is gonna say either there is no herniated disc, or the herniated disc was there before the crash, or you know the herniated disc was there before the crash, and this malingerer, this faker, is trying to now say that it's all from the crash, that the crash is causing the pain where he had this before. This just comes from the normal aging process. This comes from living your life. So you have a pretty weak case. But now if you call the same person, right, and, he, and you have the same medical evidence, you have that doctor testify. But in addition to that, you have, let's say, friends, you have coworkers, you have a little bit of the human story, you know about this person, what kind of an individual this is, the fact that this is a person who is taking care of, let's say, taking care of people or doing some kind of community outreach, community service for others, that they're selfless, right? That they're giving up their time for others 
and you talk about that and you talk about their history and what they overcame in their life and their childhood and their teenage years, uh, what kind of obstacles they had to overcome. Now, what the juror could then do is you're allowing the jurors to clinically correlate that family story, right? That human story with the medical records. So it's not just boring medical records, herniated disc at C3, C4. Now it's like, wow, this is an individual who helps out at his church like every Sunday. This is an individual who perhaps um, one of his cousins was developmentally disabled and the mother had to go away into some kind of a, a treatment program, but he volunteered to take care of that developmentally disabled cousin. And he took him in and he took care of him as if that was his own child. You know, stuff like that, very powerful things. It, it really depends on everyone's life is different, right? It depends on factors. Like I was handling one case where it's a very interesting dynamic. It's a lady who is older and she's living in a household and even though she is severely injured and severely disabled, the household works almost like a triangle, right? Where each part of the, there's three people in the household, everybody in the household helps each other because one person maybe is a little bit developmentally disabled, so they're not able to do certain things. But our client, even though she's very injured from the fall that she took and she fractured her leg really badly, she makes the appointments, like the doctor's appointments for her developmentally disabled sister. And then there's another child there and the child has trouble reading, but then our client helps the, the child learn to read and has improved dramatically. You see, so it's kind of like everybody is a little bit vulnerable. Everybody's a little bit sick in that household, but they rely on each other. And without each other, they wouldn't be able to survive. So it's all these like fascinating stories. So I think it's very, very important for a lawyer with any type of serious case to get into the nitty gritty, of find out about your clients, find out about their um, their friends, their coworkers, before and after witnesses, anybody in their life who could tell the story, who they were before they got hurt and who they are now. And that's how you can really, you know, knock the lid off of these cases and get tremendous verdicts, get these high uh, co compensation verdicts, because otherwise you're just telling the boring medical records, which everybody does, right? And there's no reason for the jurors who are just strangers. They're being selected to jury duty against their will. M many of them probably don't even want to be there. Why would they allow for huge multi-million dollar damages unless they have some kind of connection, unless they have some kind of reason, and unless they understand why this injury is so debilitating, right? What, what is this injury doing to you as an injured person? That's what you have to be able to show. So I hope this has been helpful. I think it's very, very important. And um, it's something we try to do with all of our cases. Okay, talk to you soon. Let us know what questions you have and we're here for you. Bye-bye.